Hey, welcome back everyone. It is now October 11th of 2020 and ever since the very end of the Skywalker saga, a lot of fans around the world have been very intrigued about the future of the Star Wars franchise by Disney, Lucasfilm, Bob Iger, Bob Chapek, you name it, and exactly what the future holds when it comes to Star Wars. This is Mike Zero. Make sure to subscribe if you are new to the channel for future Star Wars content. Now, one thing about Disney Star Wars is that, yes, we do know that they are now currently in a phase of desperation and damage control to really get the ball rolling again when it comes to this massive franchise. Essentially, what they really want to do is that they really want to explore every option possible. They also want to expand off of many of the popular characters like the Skywalkers and some of the other characters that we all know and love that George Lucas created back in 1977. Now, when we go ahead and examine what George Lucas, Dave Filoni, and John Favreau are really trying to put together here is a brand new expanded universe that's really going to be as authentic and as passionate by the by the creators as it was with the old expanded universe. If you go back and take a look at the old EU, you can tell that a lot of passion was poured into those stories. We really could not say the same when it comes to Disney Star Wars with the sequel trilogy and some of the expanded material. I will admit that some of the books that have been released did a good job here and there, but some of the other material, I honestly really didn't think it really matched up with the old EU. Now, moving beyond all of this, a lot of fans have been really curious about the future of some aspects of the Star Wars franchise and the connections to the Skywalker Saga's end. A lot of fans have been very curious about specific lives of some of the fan favorite characters that we all know and love that will be re-explored by George, John, and Dave. Now specifically, all right, now that The Rise of Skywalker is out of theaters, both Disney and Lucasfilm have been developing their brand new Star Wars universe to deliver a new mythology to Star Wars fans around the world. It's explained that both Bob Iger and Bob Chapek are doing everything in their power to restore the Star Wars brand and to bring everything back to normal. As of right now, Disney and Lucasfilm are working on a brand new project that is aimed to be released sometime in 2023 on Disney+, Plus. that is described to be a sequel to the rise of Skywalker in the form of a series. Now, this series is aimed to show the fans the return of Rey Skywalker and the birth and maturity of her new Jedi Order on the world of Tatooine, leading to an eventual story of her children, currently dubbed as Zane and Kira Skywalker, that will be based off of Jaina Solo and Cade Skywalker. However, Lucas is said to be in the process of changing Zane Skywalker's name in the new Star Wars series. So let's stop right here for a second, is that this animated sequel series, we talked about this a couple of months ago. You guys may very well recall that this is a major project that George, John, and Dave are working on to really expand the character of Rey. Now, a lot of people out there may not be all that, you know, excited about this because it's got Rey in there and it's going to keep her as Rey Skywalker. Keep in mind also that this show is going to make an attempt to make her a literal Skywalker in a sense and to explain exactly how she became an actual Skywalker. And we've gone over this before in the past is that George, John and Dave are experimenting with having Ben Solo's spirit become a part of Rey. And that's exactly how she becomes a brand new legitimate Skywalker in the series. So beyond all of this, you know, the fact that they are going to explore Rey's children, currently dubbed as Jaina, or should I say, Zane and Kira Skywalker based off of Jaina and Kate Skywalker. You know, we can see that they're really trying to bring back Star Wars legends in a different way, obviously, right? Jaina Solo, you know, popular character, Cade Skywalker, also a popular character among Star Wars legends. So moving past all of this, this is where things begin to get all the more interesting when it comes to this massive project is that, well, it's described that Jon Favreau will be working on the project and how Anakin Skywalker, Ben Solo, and Luke will return in the brand new Star Wars project. Now, it's described that Ben Solo in the series will be referred to as Ben Solo Skywalker in order to make him feel more like an authentic Skywalker in the new Star Wars TV series, where all of the Force Ghosts are set to make a major return in the new animated show that will be very lifelike and similar to the animation style for the cutscenes from the old Republic video games. 
I want you guys to go ahead and take a minute later, you know, after you watch this or even between watching this if you want to, go ahead and check out the Old Republic cutscenes. They have all the cutscenes on the internet, amazing visuals, amazing animation, and can I just not forget here the fact that they use the prequel trilogy music in those actual cutscenes? It's just perfect. So the fact that they are going to take inspiration from video game-esque cutscenes and throwing it into this new series, I think honestly is a great bridge between live action and animation. Now, this new Star Wars TV show for Disney Plus is going to explore the new Jedi Order that is set to take place on the world of Tatooine, and it's said to be a teased or be teased in a new comic series before the TV show drops in 2023 that will give fans a glimpse of this new Jedi Order in the Star Wars universe. Actor Hayden Christensen is said to return as the voice of Anakin Skywalker and will be providing facial scans for the character to return. So once again, guys, they are going to give us this new Jedi Order that takes place on the world of Tatooine. And I'm not quite sure if a lot of fans will accept this. Some fans out there may very well go on and say that it doesn't make all that much sense to throw a Jedi Order or a temple, if you will, on Tatooine. But obviously you can see that they're trying to really kind of take things off where everything was left off at the very end of episode nine, right? You've got Rey on Tatooine burying the lightsabers by the Lars homestead. She meets the old woman and she says that she is Rey Skywalker. You see the Force goes, I mean, the list goes on. They want to keep the nature of the Skywalkers on Tatooine and the Jedi on Tatooine. I honestly think it's a great move. I think it's very much poetic in a sense, and it really does just all come together to really keep the world of Tatooine as relevant as possible and closest to the Skywalkers. Now, this is where things begin to really pick up, is that, well, Anakin is set to get a major redesign, as well as Ben Solo in the series in the beginning, that's actually planned to take place roughly five years after the events of the Rise of Skywalker, showing a struggling Rey building her new Jedi Order and looking for Force sensitives across the galaxy with the help of the Force ghosts. Actors like Samuel Jackson and Liam Neeson are also set to lend their voices as the iconic Jedi in the new show. George Lucas will be writing some of the episodes in the near future, and that this is described to be a planned three-season TV show with 12 episodes each, with the chance of it getting more than three seasons if successful. Now, the new series is also described to bring a return of Emperor Palpatine in the form of a spirit, with plans to bring back actor Ian McDermott to do the voiceover work for that character. It's noted that they are also going to include the dark acolyte in the series that was cut from the original version of episode 9 before Kathleen Kennedy came in to delete those scenes from the movie. Now this major plan by Disney is to explore the Skywalkers in greater depth and that the main Skywalkers will be coming back to life temporarily in the new TV show to help Rey fight against Palpatine and a brand new foe from a new galaxy. The show's format is set to move throughout the ages, leading to Rey's eventual maturity as an older woman to explore the birth and rise of the new Jedi Order and even her children as well as herself. So here's the, th here's the thing that's very important that I think a lot of fans need to know is that Kathleen Kennedy will have zero involvement on this new Star Wars TV series, and that's a good thing. That tells us, the fans, that we're finally going to be able to see exactly what these characters will look like without Kathleen Kennedy's input. You know, the fact that all the Force Ghosts are going to come back into play in this new show I think is an amazing thing. It obviously shows that they want to expand off of already what they teased in Episode 9 with the Force Ghosts talking to Rey. Now they want to visually show them actually interacting with Rey pretty much helping her on her journey to discover Force Sensitives to join her new Jedi Order. I don't know about you guys. To me, this sounds like a very fun animated TV show, and it sounds like that what they're trying to do is that they're once again trying to make it into an adventure epic series. They're really trying to keep that adventure style to Star Wars, and this is the best way to go about doing it. They're not going to start things off right away with Rey's new Jedi Order being established. It's going to start off with her struggling to build it from the ground up, and it takes quite a number of years to do that. 
So this is a very interesting take on Star Wars. I think that George, John, and Dave are going to do an amazing job with this. So if you guys did enjoy the content for today, do make sure to drop a thumbs up on this video to support the channel. I thank you all so very much for the kind support, and I'll catch you guys next time.